Hello, and welcome to another edition of The Comic Anthologist. And if you haven't hit the like button, please do so. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so. Thank you. Now, today, we are going to talk about the third chapter of The Darkest Days of the X-Men during a timeline called Days of Future Past. Oh, yeah. Doomsday. Now, this one, all I can say is more craziness. All of the events leading up to issue 141 of Uncanny X. Exactly. Yeah. And even in the first uh, two pages, Wolverine literally is trying to assist and buy time for Colossus and Shadowcat for her to have her two her twin babies. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, basically you see that he looks like he has gotten apparently killed. Right. And Storm jumps into the fray, but eventually... All the people that we're just mentioning, like Colossus, right. uh, Shadowcat, Storm, and even Forge. Forge had basically was even caught too as well. But, but the craziness of it, of it all was mm -hmm. the death of the Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah. And one of the things I also noticed too about that particular issue was uh, Ahab, since he's prominent on the cover. And in his case... Of what he did to Rachel Summers. That was just that was a straight cold, man. That was straight cold. And then on top of it, he made her enjoy it to a degree. Mm -hmm. And the craziness that I thought was she took apart Ben Grimm telekinetically. And I said, now it's cold blooded. He says, look, we love you. Why don't you just and still just took him apart because Ahab wanted not only just the uh, the mutants dead, but he wanted all superpowered beings dead. So that's still based off the basic premise of the original Days of Future Past, because as far as I'm concerned, they were the Sentinels saw all superpowered beings as a threat, not just the mutants. And not only that, they also saw humans who aided the superpowered people and mutants as a threat as well. And those that had the gene, mm -hmm. the gene to have mutant children down the line. Oh, let's not just, let me also, uh, I want to interject too with mm -hmm. that as well, is that they, uh, those same human beings that were trying to help the mutants, mm -hmm. they were seen as collateral damage. And that's basically what got to me into the story was that having seen just regular people as collateral damage, they weren't even caring about the after effects of what it was doing to the society, doing mm -hmm. to the city around them. Hell, it was basically doing dirt to the country itself because the Sentinels had now started setting up traps for anybody or anyone that had powers or didn't have powers mm -hmm. or people that were collaborators. Right made sure that they could not do anything and if they did those traps would take them out oh let's not also let's i want to also interject too well as well um what they did to scarlet witch mm. and basically start setting up the environment to make it just inhos inhospitable to just basically everybody except to the ones in charge right and the symbols were basically the ones running things because too they were also talking about starting a nuclear war and that was the thing. The Sentinels and the people that were running the Sentinel program had weaponized the Scarlet Witch. And that, to me, I said to myself, that is some cold stuff. You sit up there and take your family and friends and turn them into weapons against you. Mm -hmm. And we see some of that in some of the wars that's going on today uh, in these current times. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in this book, you see how things played out in such a way that you notice why there were no superheroes. There were no mutants, barely, and right. Wolverine was basically on the run. Yeah, literally. And also, too, the, uh, the, I would say not the final fate of Magneto, but what we saw to Magneto, which ironically made him a Professor X. Basically. Yeah, and that was, I was like, man, that's pretty cold, man. That was... It was cold-blooded for the simple fact that he wanted to take down that building, mm -hmm. but the unfortunate irony is that he ended up becoming somebody that basically... Paralyzed from the waist down after getting hit with that beam. But, but you know the thing is, I, I enjoyed though. What? It was quite gratifying, and I'll just say Ahab. Yeah. He. Ooh. I enjoyed that. I mean, yeah, because when you see someone doing just wrong, wrong, and just you see and reveling in it too. Yeah, exactly. And, and then making Rachel feel, oh no, you're doing this out of love. You got to keep doing this. Right. This is done out of love. And I said, you got a twisted sense of love, bro. Oh, you know what I th also I thought about too. There was a statement during that Days of uh, Future pr uh, Present from that crossover with those uh, annuals that came out years ago. Mm -hmm. Back in 1990. I remember a line that said Ahab, because Ahab himself is a time, he could travel through time with the, the Sentinel 
pro uh, produce technologies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But the thing that got to me was that I remember that one line he said in that annual, that X-Men annual, right? It was the final chapter of that Days of Future Present. Mm -hmm. And he flat out said, you'll meet me in the days to come. And that's what Because exactly rem remember, happened. it was the X-Factor, X-Men, and the New Mutants went up to, uh, and Fantastic Four went toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Ahab, and they almost lost. But in that other story, in that other timeline... Not the New Mutants, but X-Force. Okay. Because in the other timeline, of course, you see what happens to the New Mutants and the X-Men. They were just practically decimated. Right. And X-Force never got a chance to form. Mm -hmm. And the one anomaly that kind of shocked me that was a surprise, but he definitely didn't turn up in 1980 when the first original version of uh, issue, Uncanny X-Men issue number 141 came out, right. was Bishop. Yeah, that one, that took me by surprise. I, Bishop, I was, yeah, Bishop to me was the time anomaly. He was the, the, the living paradox that was basically trying to prevent certain things from happening, mm -hmm. but sometimes there's certain things you just can't stop from happening. Kind of like a, a causality loop. Exactly. You can do everything that you can to try to prevent, and you can, it's like, say, theoretically, you have a time machine, and you keep doing something over and over again to prevent that same event happening or trying to make things better, but it keeps happening, but just in different circumstances. Um, yeah, they kind of like that's kind of like a causality loop type situation. A causality loop and also a nexus point. Right. And this is from just a science fiction standpoint. A nexus point is basically one of those things that you cannot change no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, no matter what events you're trying to change around and keep from preventing there's certain things that cannot be avoided. And, and this is one of them. And one of the things I also want to discuss too, even though it was gratifying to see Ahab when certain things went down with him, mm -hmm. with a certain character, because mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil it or anything like that, even though we spoiled up quite a bit. We've already spoiled quite a bit, but the thing is, but it, the thing is, yeah. the thing about Ahab, with those previous annuals that came out and even those previous storylines that involved him, he was always time traveling. So I was wondering, he came back to that timeline and then he met his final fate. That's the only thing I'm thinking of. Because well, they had to set it up that way. Because right. there's no other way around. Because we it. didn't see him in the uh, issue of uh, 141 and 142. No, he, he wasn't around. But yeah. he was around in the, the annuals. Right. And he showed up in Excalibur. Right. But he didn't show up at all in those two issues, 141 and 142. Right. Period. Just the sentinels. Yeah, because another thing, a uh, sentinel that we didn't see, but we see in part three of that book is uh, Nimrod. Nimrod. Yeah, yeah the Nimrod, Nimrod class, class sentinels. Sentinels. Yeah, which was Omega Sentinels. For those who've seen the movies, of the, the, especially the original Days of Future Past movie, they were called Omega Sentinels, but in the comics, they were the Nimrod-class Sentinels. And the Nimrod-class Sentinels are the ones that could never be beaten. I, they could have an army of them. They could, they could barely be beaten because they could always come back and they always remember how they were beaten, so you can't beat them the same way twice. Right. They always learn from their adversaries, and if you defeat them the same way once, you can't do it a second, third, or fourth time. Also, too... And this is jumping to the fall of X. Nimrod was the main one that spearheaded the slaughter of the X-Men. So it's like, what happens is, they showed it later on in the story, like in earlier issues of the X-Men, mm -hmm. where he made his first appearance, issue 191. Mm -hmm. um, Nimrod uh, basically traveled back through time. Mm -hmm. And then when he traveled back through time, he took on a different identity. But then at some point, Nimrod still came to pass mm -hmm. when he wasn't supposed to. He wasn't, he wasn't supposed to be there in that first place, but it's kind of convoluted on his history. We can go into Nimrod another time. Right. But Nimrod always finds a way to come back. Yeah, and then that's the thing. Nimrod, when he made his appearances back in the 80s, mm -hmm. he was basically some uh, uh, a bot to deal with to the point where you can't... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe him except the best way they had to describe him. One, I mean, to defeat him one way was to throw him through the Siege Perilous. And that was... 86, no, that was 88, 89. And then what happened was um, he was merged with Master Mold. Uh, and then, and then when he merged with Master Mold, and then eventually we came out on the other end of the Siege Perilous, he came out as a humanoid, a human being, quote unquote human being, until his old programming kicked in. And he's known as the character known as Bastion. But again, that's for another, another time, time yeah. we'll discuss because, and that's dealing with Operation Zero Tolerance. Yeah, because Operation Zero Tolerance was a whole nother. That was a whole nother ball of wax to deal with. But getting back to the main point of X-Men Days of Future Past Doomsday, I found the book to be shocking at times. Oh yeah. Because you're seeing all the hidden events that you didn't see back in 1980. And plus, 
Because remember, issue 40, 141 had already opened up as, as, as being a dystopian, dystopian future, and it was a dark, and yeah. the world had already gone to, to, to chaos, and it had already gone to the, the nuclear war hadn't happened yet. No. It was just basically messed up by the Sentinels. Right. And them going around hunting and putting people in camps and all those things. So they made it bad for everybody. So all of these events that we're getting up to, it started off at year 20, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. First, yeah. Started off at year 20 and just went from there. And it ended at year 26. Wolverine on the run and more of the Sentinels mm -hmm. have been enforcing their will and more and more mutants put in concentration camps. And also, too, the hounds. The hounds were nothing to be messed with in terms of that because they were the ones going around hunting other mutants to put them in camps or have them exterminated on the spot. Yeah, and Rachel Summers was the, the most prominent one uh, because and Ahab took an, a delight in doing so and torturing her and turning her into a hound because she was the daughter of uh, Scott Summers, a.k.a. Cyclops, and Marvel Girl, a.k.a. Phoenix, um, Jean Grey. And so during that timeline, she was born and Ahab took great pleasure of turning her into a hound and then having her kill her own family members of the X-Men and the Fantastic and Four, the Fantastic as what we Four. mentioned yeah. before. Yeah, so he, it, that's why I, when Ahab got his comeuppance, I was enjoying that. Ah, yes. But so, any case, that's enough for issue three. We will be back here for the final chapter of X-Men Days of Future Past Doomsday number four mm -hmm. uh, in a few weeks. But in the meantime, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to sit up there and email me at thecomicanthologist at gmail.com. Until then, take it easy, have a good evening, and see you next time. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so. And if you haven't hit that like button, please do so. Thank you. Take care.